should have this sucker cleaned in the future. But I think I found something. Come here. Oh, yeah. Hello and welcome to Hammer and Steel Reviews. Today we're going to be looking at the Sutton Who helmet made by Topeka. First order of business before we get started, this is not a Viking helmet. No, 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 this is an Anglo-Saxon helmet from about the 630s to 650s AD. Before we get started, I want to thank our sponsors, WeaponMasters.com, for supplying these weapons and armor. Without their support, none of these videos would be possible. The helmet itself was discovered in the 40s, right before the beginning of World War II. The burial mound was discovered by amateur archaeologists. The story of how the Sutton Hoo helmet was found is quite intriguing. A private citizen of the United Kingdom had these burial mounds in the back of her yard. Thinking they were from the Viking era, she forded the money herself to have the mounds excavated. Lo and behold, they came upon something quite rare, and that's an Anglo-Saxon burial mound, and quite important for the English heritage. To, to the people who live in England, an Anglo-Saxon find is much more important than a Viking find. Vikings were more of an invading force, while the Anglo-Saxons are part of their heritage. So the discovery at Sutton Hoo was quite, quite important. It included a ship, many fragments, and over a hundred plus fragments of this helmet. Now this, of course, is the replica, and I'll go over pros and cons of this certain replica. But something you should know of the original is, it is in multiple pieces, and throughout the years, it has been pieced together multiple times each time it was pieced together it looks slightly different now this iteration is none of them this is a recreation and that's one of the cons as a recreation it does have some artistic liberties some things that it gets absolutely right though are the panelings inside of the helmet itself these pewter tin panels inside here uh, have the exact same number as the ones found at the Sutton Hood dig it depicts on one side a horseman charging over a man, and then uh, on the cheek plates, two men with horns crossing swords. And then the other panels are more of a interlacing serpent kind of uh, knotwork. And then on the face, you have these uh, decorative knotwork pieces in through here. Uh, the neck has the same type of decoration with the brass inlay and the brass overlay. The reproduction does have a brass nose, mustache, eyebrow. Uh, these pieces here, I'm not quite sure if they are brass because you can see some of this metallic pewtering in here. And, and what that might be is this might be a place where they applied a solder. And if that's the case, then some of the metal got on there. But there's another way to get brass onto a metallic looking surface, and that's to get the surface extremely hot and then take a brass wire wheel and uh, burnish some of the brass onto the metal. So I'm not quite sure if these pieces here are that, um, but I'm pretty sure at least the nose, the mustache, and I'm pretty sure the brow is all brass. Now, the reproduction helmet itself is 16 gauge, 
with these overlays and we were going to go and do a test on it until we ran into something. It would have been painful to wear this helmet. Now this is where we're getting into the cons because the pros of this helmet is in its price range it is one of the only Sutton Hoo reproductions that actually gets a lot of this stuff right. It gets the, the form pretty right, um, it gets the, the panels pretty right, and it gets the, the overall shape pretty right. Um, but with that being said, as a recreation piece or a piece that recreates history, there are some wrong pieces. Uh, I will point those out real quick. Uh, the back plate here on the neck, this does not go out far enough to not get hung up on your shoulders. It is just not. It needs to be tapered out uh, a couple degrees more this way. Uh, in the real piece, the cheeks don't just kind of flop to the side. They actually kind of wrap in around the cheek. That would have been very nice. It's, that's very Roman style as well. If you ever see a, a Roman helmet that's just flat on each side, that's most definitely a reproduction because they, re they would wrap in around the cheeks. That is also. Um, another thing is there's uh, the, the eye shape is different in the real piece. Um, of course, we don't know exactly how it was shaped, but we have a pretty good idea. And these eyes just dip down way too far. The, the real one's eyes are, I would say, closer to a human eye. Um, this comb across the top has been acid etched, which of course they didn't have acid etching back then. Um, but it's, it's, it's nice enough to get away with it. Um, if you want an exact reproduction of the no, Sutton Hoo let's get to the, the biggest issue with this helmet. And the biggest issue with this helmet really comes down to wearing it. Oh. So it looks super cool. I really like the look of the helmet. But between it getting caught on your shoulders and the fact that there is nowhere for my nose to go behind here, you think there'd be space behind this nose here? There isn't, it's just flat. So this is laying right up against my nose. So the circumference of the head is perfect for my size of head, it's a larger head. But this piece, this piece here, is set so far back that it is like smashing my nose. So it's actually kind of painful just to wear the helmet. It kind of hurts. I could pack the entire front area of the brow here with uh, heavy padding so it pushes the brow away, but as soon as I get hit the first time in the face, that is just gonna crush my nose. So unfortunately that makes it kind of unwearable. If these pieces here were flared out back a little more, it would not hurt to move my head up. It smashes my face into the back there. Ow. So that's unfortunate because it is beautiful and I want to wear the helmet, but it just crushes your nose. Uh, it is extremely comfortable everywhere else because it has this dual webbing system on the inside. So not only is the helmet lined in a leather, it also has this webbed helmet liner inside with the straps. Now the straps help a little bit with King being off my nose but not enough to not mitigate being smashed in the nose. If you can see the back of this panel here, there is nowhere for your nose to go. In fact, there's a piece of leather that actually juts out right where your nose should be. So that is unfortunate. So if you've got a smaller head than a Lord large head, maybe like a medium head, then it might be fine for you. Especially with the fact that if you look back at pictures of me wearing the helmet, it seems a little small. So this helmet might be for uh, people with smaller heads, which is unfortunate because I really like the helmet. I want to wear it. <laughs> I want to create an Anglo-Saxon kit around this helmet. But because it has some inaccuracies, I won't. Instead, this will be a beautiful piece that will sit on my mantle or at my office or wherever else I can convince my wife to let me put it because it is gorgeous. I really dig the look of it. I really like the look of it. Now, another issue that we ran into was these garnets here. These garnets are not glass, they are plastic. And for the price of how much the helmet was, I was hoping 
hoping that this would have at least glass garnets, but they're not. So Dupika sends them with a little baggie of garnets that you can replace them with, a little sticky back bag of garnets. Now this isn't a, a reflection on Weapon Masters or anything. They, they just sell the product made by Dupika. And uh, as an honest review, I, I have to say for my large head, it doesn't work for me. Someone with a smaller head, it would probably work just fine. And I like the piece. It represents a very interesting point in history, both 1940s and in the 625s, because by a high status individual and judging on its workmanship, the size of the burial site, the size of the ship, um, he might be King Redwall of East Anglia, a very predominant and very famous Anglo-Saxon king from his time period, or anything else from Weapon Masters that is, use our promo code with them. It's HANDSVIEWER2021. That'll get you a 10% discount on your order. Uh, let them know that you, you know, watch our videos, and as you do, that'll uh, help us out a lot. It also, if you like the video, please like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and all the other YouTube things they ask you to do. Help us out with the algorithm, help us out by getting our videos out, we really want to expand. We thank you so much for watching. Our viewers are the most important thing to us. If you'd like to see something, please mention it down in the comments below. Our hands on the things you guys mention and test them out. Um, thank you all for watching. And as always, may all your days be filled with history.